Hey gamers, what's up? Muzz here from L1 Games, but I'm not at L1 Games today. I'm at home doing this video for you. A few months ago, I started a project that I think you're really going to enjoy. I decided that I wanted a better and bigger media gaming and VR setup for my living room. And along the journey, as I built it and created it, I took videos and pictures that I put together in this video that I want to share with you so you can see what I did, maybe get some ideas for yourself in the future if it's something you're interested in doing. And uh, I think it's really good. So uh, this is it. This is the video. Everything I did from beginning to end in the creation of my new gaming setup. And I hope you enjoy. Now, as with most projects I do, this started off with a drawing. And this is the original drawing that I did of what I wanted to accomplish. What you're about to see now is the very first video I shot talking about the ideas that I had going forward. All right, so this is the mantle as it is. The hearth will get replaced, the mantle is going, and hopefully I'm gonna build a feature wall straight up to the top. This mantle, is seven and a half inches closer to the window on the right than it is to the window on the left. When you pay attention, it's pretty obvious. So I'm gonna build the feature wall and then on the left side, there's gonna be a seven and a half inch shelf. I'm not sure yet if I'm popping out this tile or not. I'm really just gonna go over top of it anyway. There's gonna be probably cement board going over it or whatnot and then I'll be tiling the whole thing all the way up. So we'll see what happens when it's done. The couch will actually go on that wall where the TV is now. So I'll be able to center the couch on the TV. And the TV will be above the fireplace and the fireplace will have no mantle. It'll just be a flush mount feature wall wood burning fireplace. Now there are a couple things in that video that actually didn't happen. Some things I changed, some ideas. Originally I was going to do the fireplace to leave it open as a wood burning fireplace. But as I got further in the project, and you'll see why later, it didn't quite suit my needs and I kind of improvised. This is when I pulled the mantle off the wall for the first time and really got to look at what was inside. I was super happy that I got it all in one pop, like I didn't have to disassemble it because I had plans for it, which I will show you later. And as I looked inside, I realized there was tile behind the tile and wallpaper behind it. So I'm not 100% sure if the mantle was taken off and the house was wallpapered and then the mantle was put back, or if this was maybe a second mantle that was put in the house. But either way, this was all updated at one point with the new tile on top of the original tile. So I definitely decided at that point to pull all the tile off. And you can see in these pictures that the tile that was used later was a lot thinner than the tile that was originally used. And as I pulled it all off, I got to see the face of the original tile and it was this crazy peach and black design, peach with a black trim. And man, it was pretty ugly, I gotta say. <laughs> And there was a lot of mortar on there that was used to both hold the tile to the wall and to grout it, it looks like. It looked like the same material. And as you can see, a lot of the tiles here on the bottom left popped right off. And then as I worked my way up, there was a wire mesh underneath some of it. And I pulled all that off and a lot of it came right off. You can see I'm just prying it from the wall. And here I got it all off and you can see there are just three large chunks of it on the ground in front of the fireplace. So I was really glad that that came off nice and easy. Of course, you can still see here that the, the hearth was untouched and that was what I had to address next. So as you can see here, I got the tile up from the hearth. It was a really tough job. I used a pry bar and a hammer for most of it. And I needed to get it shaved down a lot more so I could fit the tile in there. The tile I was using was about 3 eighths of an inch and the tile I pulled up was much thinner. And here you can see the arch in the fireplace. I didn't know that existed beforehand and that changed my plans a little bit, which you will see later on. So at this point I had everything stripped down, ready to go. I was ready to start framing the, the new feature wall 
and I took a bunch of pictures of this process. Unfortunately, I dropped my phone and I lost all of my pictures. The screen shattered. I couldn't boot the phone up. I couldn't get anything off of it. I didn't have anything saved to the cloud. It was totally my own fault. So I hunted around and I found some pictures that turned out to be like thumbnail sized pictures. And I'll include them here so you can just get an idea of what I was doing, although the quality is not great. Uh, in this time, I bought all the HDMI cable that I needed. I ended up running four HDMI cables at about 40 feet a piece. I ran an optical audio cable and a coax in case I ever wanted to hook up like an old school system or something. And all of this went behind the framed wall. It was really, it was a tough job. I had to get all the cables run through the basement and up the wall above the fireplace and ready to hook into plates that the TV would plug directly into. And then they had to run up a wall on the side of the room and I put plates there as well where I could hook up my game console. So I'd have a completely flush stealth design with the TV and the way it mounted and everything. I didn't want any wires hanging. I didn't want to have to ever get behind that TV. So I did all that and got that ready to go. As you can see here, uh, I started the frame and then I put two by fours going horizontally across the wall. I wanted it to come out about another inch and a half. And with the face of the fireplace there and everything, it really worked out perfectly. I'd anchored the new feature wall to the ceiling and the floor, the way you would do it if you're framing a new wall. And then I put these boards across it horizontally and then I anchored the ones that go across the fireplace itself. To do that, I used four inch lag bolts. So this wall is never going anywhere unless I want to take it down. At this point, I also decided to square off the fireplace, just frame around it. And I found a really nice electric insert that I could pop in there and it would look really clean. And that idea kind of came to me. Originally, I was going to leave it open just so I could have this wood burning fireplace underneath and I was going to paint it black. It was going to look really sharp, but I decided to go a little more modern on it. And as you can see here, this is where I did a test fit to make sure I had exactly the right height and everything. And you'll see later also that that brick in the back of the fireplace, I actually took that out. It's uh, it was kind of like a cheap sticky paper thing. And I took that out and the back of it is now black but you'll see that later on. At this point, I had the framework done and I was ready to start putting up the backer board. Also, this is when I got my new phone and we can go back to regular pictures. And as you can see here, I've got all the backer board up and ready to go. This is just a concrete board that's made for tiling on top of, and I had to put it all up there, make sure everything was level and flat and ready for the tile. On the left side, you'll notice there is no backer board. Well, that's because that's where that shelf was going and I decided to mount it directly to the two x four that runs along the side. And I thought it would be really cool if I added kind of a, an overlapping edge to the shelf that will cover the seam between the shelf and the tile, which you'll see later on. So at this point, of course, I had to pick my tile. I had been looking at different ones I went to a store called Floor and & Decor and I probably had four or five in my head at the time that I thought might do the trick. And this is the one I ended up picking. I wanted something that had kind of a rustic look to it. This really fit the bill for me. I like vintage style with modern flair. And I knew I was gonna add a lot of modern touches to this to make it kind of a, a, a transitional feature where I have this vintage looking wall with all these modern elements like LED lights and you know a, an electric fireplace insert so I just thought it would be really cool but before I made a purchase for the entire wall I decided to get a couple pieces so I could bring them home check them out in the room against the wall and see if it was something I liked here's a video I shot that day all right so these are the sample tiles for the feature wall 24 by 24, kind of a antique vi vintage. I would, I don't know if I'd call it Tuscan, but colors I love. Each 
each one has a little bit of a different pattern on it. There are several different ones. I, uh, I snagged four, you can see three of them here. And that's what's going on the feature wall, I think. I'm gonna take them in there and basically just hold it up to the wall and see if I like what I see. What I love about these are the grays and blues, yellows, Got some rusty reds and browns. This suits whatever you want to do in your living room. There aren't a lot of tiles that offer you that, unless you go with white, black, or gray or something. And I don't know. We did that whole bathroom in black and white, so I decided I wanted to kind of step up my color options. Once I decided these were the tiles I wanted to use, I then had to set up the pattern since. Each one of these was different and I had to place them in a way that I didn't have repeating pieces of tile. I decided to lay it all out on my floor. So I literally drew my wall on the floor of the garage and laid the tiles out in the order in which I was going to lay them on the wall. I then placed a blue piece of painter's tape on each piece and I numbered them. Here's a drawing you can see of the original design plan for the tile. I wanted to lay them out in a way that put the grout line right up the center of the fireplace. So the fireplace has two doors that open and I wanted those since they're on the very center to match up with the grout line to match up with the center of the TV all the way up to the ceiling. And I accomplished that by doing this and I had to then cut each tile on the right and on the left. So that created eight major cuts, which was a little bit scary for me because each one of these tiles cost $15. And if I made a mistake, it was a $15 mistake. I don't have any pictures of it, but I actually cracked one of these really badly when I was cutting it. And uh, luckily I could flip it around and I used the other side for one of the cuts, but it was, I think a miracle that I didn't completely destroy one of these tiles trying to get it on the wall. And again, more drawings showing the measurements of everything and how I was gonna put it up on the wall. I wanted to be 100% certain that I had this plan laid out before I tried putting the wall together because I knew any mistake could, could spell disaster. So here's the final wall on the floor of the garage. I drew it all out with the fireplace and everything. So I knew at this point that what I was gonna do was gonna fit and I was ready to go. So at this point, I'm ready to go with the wall, but I still had to handle the hearth. And I knew what I had to do was grind it down so I could fit this 3 8 inch thick tile into the floor and it would still be flush with the floor. I didn't want any kind of rise or bump or edge sticking up. So I got it all together. I got this grinding attachment for the, the angle grinder. I put plastic over everything so no dust would get out into the rest of the house. I opened up the windows and I started grinding. Unfortunately, this was a way dustier job than I thought it was going to be. I've never done this before, so I didn't know exactly how bad it was. But as you can see, it was insane. I finished grinding that day at about 4 p.m. I didn't finish cleaning until 10 p.m. The entire room had to be cleaned from, from ceiling to floor. And unfortunately, even the rest of the house had tons of dust in it that I had to take care of, including everything that I put under plastic. I had, to, I had to wipe off every DVD in the house. It was just outrageous, the mess this caused. So next time I'll know to account for that, but you know, lesson learned. The good news is that once it was done, I could lay those tiles into the hearth and it was perfect. So here's a couple of shots of that. So once the hearth was done, I was ready to hit the wall. And there was a lot of consideration here. I didn't quite know exactly where I wanted to start. So what I decided was to mount a board across the very top of the fireplace and start there. So I would have a grout line that goes right into the top of the fireplace. And then I could line up the center as well, going straight up to the ceiling. And I would work off of that. And in the end, that turned out to be, I think, the best way to do it. So as you can see here, bit by bit, I was getting that put together and ready to go. I had to cut some thin pieces to go around the mount where I was gonna put the TV. You'll also notice I used some old vintage boards 
for the TV mount itself. And it's kind of funny, those boards came from the bathroom of the house. Those were about 70 years old. So I sanded them down, I refinished them, and I decided they would be a great little kind of secret Easter egg behind the TV that no one will ever see, but are original to the house on the new feature wall. And as it happened, by pure luck, the height of the wall from the very top of the fireplace to the ceiling was actually exactly the height of three tiles, including the grout line. I was super stoked about this. I didn't even have to trim the top tiles. And I wanted that because I wanted as much of these tiles exposed as I could because I knew I was gonna be putting a really big TV in front of them. So now I was ready to do just the tile on the left and the right side of the fireplace, which is funny because that took me as long to do as the rest of the wall took. It really turned out to be the hardest part of the job. Uh, especially at the very bottom, you'll see we had a two inch piece of tile that had to kind of stretch across the bottom there. And in the end, it looked pretty good. I was really worried about that because I thought it was gonna look like garbage, but in the end, I'm really pleased with how it came out. Here's a video I shot right at this point of the job where I talk about some of the things you've already heard me say here, but it was kind of just what was going through my head at the time and what I wanted to do. Let's take a look at this video. So this is the feature wall so far. I like this pattern, this tile came out really nice. I used those old floorboards from the bathroom to hang the TV mount from. Now this is my last bit of tile work. I was gonna use this piece of trim, but I've been using a lot of the same stain on the things I've been doing lately. And I figured a nice way to match it up would be to use that and do an outside corner piece down that edge. And then I'm gonna put a trim piece on the shelf that I'm building here. And the shelf will be flush and out just a little bit. And that trim piece is actually gonna overlap the tile. So everything's gonna have a real smooth finished look. the electric insert is going in there. I was originally going to tile the inside of this, like right along those edges, all the way around, and then paint the interior of the fireplace black, put a candelabra in there or something. But I decided that's not what I want to do. An insert has a nice clean finished look. I figure if someone else wants to tile that down the road, they can do it, or if they ever rip this wall out, they won't have to worry about it. Hearth. Grinded that all down. It was a huge dusty mess, but I love the match as it goes up. And then with that insert there, it's gonna look clean. New TV, I'm probably gonna do a 70 inch. And just a bead of caulk around the top. I'll be all finished with it. So all that was left at this point was to run the tile down the right side of the feature wall, throw in the grout, and then work on trim. So I got all those pieces of tile in and then I began to tape everything off so I could do caulk. When I do caulk, I like to tape it off. A lot of people can just run a bead of caulk, slide their thumb across it or whatever and call it a day. I like really, really clean lines and edges. So this takes way longer. But in the end, I love the final product. And once I pulled that tape off, here's what my caulk looked like. And I was really happy with the job. And at this point, I was ready to start building the shelf. So I went to Lowe's, I grabbed some white wood, and I built this shelf about seven and a half inches out from the wall to make the distance between the feature wall and the window to the left the same as the feature wall and the window to the right. What I wanted was for the fireplace to be centered on the wall and the wall to be centered on the windows. And the only way I could do that in a way that made it look normal was to add a shelf. If I had just extended the wall out that way, it would have looked odd. So I started putting this together. I'm not great with woodwork. This is not my forte at all, but as you can see, I clamped 
this piece of wood across. I talked about that earlier where I was gonna create a lip that covered up the seam. That way I wasn't gonna have to caulk or grout in between the shelf and the wall. I could just bolt this right to the two by four that I hadn't covered in tile and this shelf would be done. I ended up going with a really cool solid gray stain that I found and I really like how this came out. I also used some wood outside corner trim pieces on the inside of the shelf that I could run LEDs in and then they'd be kind of flush and stealth. When they're off, you can't even tell they're there, but when they kick on, they glow from behind. And I thought that would be a really cool idea. And this is the kind of bolt I decided to use to secure them to the two by four. And you'll notice I made the hole a little big. That was so I'd have a little give, a little adjustment room for the shelf itself in case the wall wasn't 100% flat. And here's the first time I tested the LEDs. And at that point I knew it was ready to go. I just had to finish the door on the bottom which is where I put a power grommet so I could plug in the lights and everything. I could have run power to the shelf itself, but I still have some projects ahead. The floors have to get done. I knew the shelf was gonna to have to come off the wall. I just wanted something easy and quick. So you'll see on the left side, I just put a little a grommet there where the power line can go in and out. So if I don't wanna use the LEDs, I can tuck the power cord in and there's a, power outlet right beside the shelf and if I want to use them I'll just plug them into that so it worked out pretty good and it was an easy solution and once I got it ready to go I popped it on the wall there and it worked out perfectly so once the LEDs were installed the shelf was up the fireplace insert was in and everything was ready to go I decided it was time to hang the TV mount I wasn't so worried about whether it was going to work or not. I had tested it all in the beginning. I tested the HDMIs and everything when I got them. Then once I hooked all the switches up and the plates, I tested all of those. But there was a little bit of concern. Did I maybe drive a screw through one of the HDMIs while I was putting up the backer board or anything like that? So I wanted to get it hung and tested and ready to go. This is with my original TV and as you can see it's all there nicely and to the left is where all of the switches run behind that shelf. So that's where I put all of my entertainment gear. This is the TV I found. It was at Micro Center. It was on sale and I couldn't pass it up. It was a great deal. So the TV I tested it all with came down the next day and I used the same mount but I hung this TV and here it is with the lights on, the TV hung, everything's ready and set, and uh, I'm really pleased with the result. What I really like is when the lights are off and this is just glowing from behind the TV. It looks like the TV is floating off the wall. I really love how that came out. And here's some final footage just showing the TV from the different angles and how it placed, how it's centered on the wall. The wall shelf now has some decorations on it and over here is where all the entertainment stuff is plugged in, my PS4 and everything. And this is also my VR area. So it's weird to do VR not facing your TV, but of course you don't need to. I keep my PSVR in the drawer there. I did a video on my PSVR setup before, but this is really nice. I have the headset and everything right in the drawer so I never have to unhook it. I can just it all in that drawer and slide the drawer in or pull it out whenever I need to use it and it's just nice clean I sometimes I leave that wire just plugged right in so I don't even have to plug that in and then I have the camera up on top and when I want to use it I'll just pull it and set it over to the side point at wherever I want to be I have that chair on the left and I can just sit in that chair if I'm playing a game where I'm sitting down or I can stand in front and just angle that camera wherever I need it. But it does supply me with a nice big play area, at least six feet by six feet. Once the feature wall was done, I decided to give the room a full makeover and freshen everything up by adding a fresh coat of white paint to the ceiling, a 
a really light gray to the walls. And then I did all of the baseboards in a bright white, it's, uh, actually a gloss white. And I thought that would give the room a nice contemporary feel with still using all the original antique accents. And this is it, this is how it came out. So uh, here's some final videos of the wall, some different LED colors and everything. And uh, I hope you enjoy. So this is my current gaming and VR setup, and I'm really pleased with how it came out. I just, I couldn't imagine it would come out better. It is pretty much identical to the original drawing I made. I'm really stoked that I pulled this off. This is not what I do. I, it took a lot of work. It probably took 10 times longer than it would take like a real craftsman, but in the end I got it done and I'm really happy with it. And I'll bet by now you forgot, I said I was gonna tell you what I did with the original mantle. Well, believe it or not, it's behind me right now. After I pulled it out, I decided it would be really cool to turn it into kind of a, a media shelf display area for all of my limited run games. So, I added power to it. I put a power grommet on top with USB and outlets. I put LED throughout the inside of it. It all changes color. It has an app on my phone. It's very cool and I added the shelves to it and a backing board, so everything came together really nice. I sanded it all down and I restained it this darker color, and I'm really proud of how it came out. I just wanted to upcycle it, do something with it, because I thought throwing that old mantle away would be a real waste, so I'm really happy with how it came out. I want to thank you all for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please do subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell icon for updates for future videos. You can follow me on Twitter at L1Games and on Instagram at L1Muzz, that's M-U-Z-Z. -Z. And I'm out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.